Okay, everybody, it's Tuesday afternoon, 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. I'm Randy Baxter, President of Asset Positioning Services, and I promised you all last week um, that I would go over gaps and cliffs uh, from within the sales presentation. Folks, you know, I'm going to walk you through it, and you have to understand the mission, and you have to understand why I set each stage before we go into the gaps and cliffs. And it's so important. So, so uh, if y'all ready to go, I'm ready to go here. And um, let me just see here. Um, I think I'm ready to go. Jennifer, I'm not having any luck changing to the next screen. All right. If uh, it's sometimes your little arrows won't work, I'll tell you about that later. But for right now, just you have to manually click on the arrow underneath. Well, underneath I, I, the I, <clears throat> um, that's There's not letting me, that, that's not letting under, me do that. I've got under, slide one. I've got slide one, but I can't uh, uh, on down, the little screen. Go down, go down to the bottom. There's an arrow there that says slides one through 60 or whatever. There you go. Okay. I don't know what I just did, but I just did it. Okay. So, so let's talk about this, how to use the gaps and cliffs. And this is just a discussion in the family tree asset positioning, go to first interview. So, you know, um, Oh, I see what I'm doing now. Okay. Anyway, th there's a, there's a learning pyramid folks that you need to be aware of um, in marketing. You always have to assume that at the bottom of that pyramid, uh, people are unaware. They might be that unaware that there's a baby Ruth candy bar or or unaware that there's a uh, a solution to a leaky faucet. You know, they, they just they're just unaware. So you have to make the assumption that in your approaches and things that many people are unaware that gaps and cliffs exist in their income strategy. They're just out be bopping around. They're okay, okay, but they, they're not aware that that there's something that you know that might help them. So what we're going to do is examine how you get to the gaps and cliffs discussion. And you know, um, I get up every day with the intent to to if I'm going to work with a client, I'm going to get to the gaps and cliffs discussion. And I don't care. Yesterday, um, I had a couple come in, and 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 when I found out that. Uh, uh, the couple's wife couldn't get out of the car because she was feeling bad and sick and had a heart issue. Uh, and, and he came in and we sat down and talked a minute and we were looking out the window watching the car. And then she finally got out and came into the car. I knew right then that he had a cliff problem just by watching what was going on. So, so, I, and in this conversation, uh, he was coming in for the second interview and the end result was, because we talked about the cliffs, he transferred two hundred thirty thousand dollars. So, so I'm, what what I'm hoping to show you here today is how to how to do that. So, so you know, I realized that that the information I needed to get into his head and into his heart and into his gut, at, and I realized I only had about thirty minutes to do it. I realize that information has to be received at the appropriate place and time. Now, if you're a, a real pro in this process, you'll understand how important that is. It's, it's all in the delivery. So, so the family tree asset positioning go to first interview does just that. And you folks that are out there changing it, uh, I don't know why you're doing it because this thing works perfect. It works perfect. You folks who aren't doing it, I don't know why you're not doing it because the more you do it, the more money you make. So, so we're, we're going to spend most of our time on page two of the confidential because it does what I'm telling you it does. And as long as you follow the agenda, you're building the proper foundation, makes it easy to segue into the income analysis. Now, you know, uh, I don't know if, if everybody absorbed that. I hope you did. But information has to be received at the appropriate place and time. The family tree asset positioning go-to first interview does just that. 
It's on page two of the confidential. And if you follow the agenda, you don't have to memorize everything. And when you do this, you have built a proper foundation that makes it easy to segue into the income analysis. I, you know, um, I wish there was an easy way to say that. But, but you know, you got to remember, you want the prospect. And, and then notice I didn't say suspect there. I said prospect because that person has already agreed to talk to me on a favorable basis. So they're not a suspect anymore. They're a prospect. And now it's, it's my job to convert that prospect into a client. So, so remember, if you want the prospect to learn things they may not have been aware of in their current plan, you have to administer the information in the proper order. That's why, that's why I call my training program advanced training spoon fed. I give it to you a little bit at a time. So you don't miss out on anything and you understand why you need to do it. So, so you have to do it by converting unawareness into awareness before you offer a solution. Folks, if you get good at that, you're going to have more money than you ever dreamed of. But if you deny that or skip that, or try to change that, you're just going to struggle. And you're going to make mistakes in front of your client. You're going to be embarrassed about it. And they're not even going to know you made a mistake. So anyway, you have to do the family tree. And the reason you do the family tree is to establish the rapport that you want. When I did the family tree yesterday, when I got that $230,000, first, first thing I asked is I asked him about their grandchildren because I drew them out there and asked him how they were doing and it relaxed him a little bit. And I said, well, uh, is your wife being able to handle those kids? And, and, and he said, no, she's not feeling real good and I'm doing most of it. So that, that gave me, you know, I got him to tell me that he had a little bit of a health problem with his wife. And and because I could go back to the family tree that I drew, even though it looked like a fifth grader drew it, it did establish the rapport and it did create the interest and it did get us to bond a little bit because he had an opportunity to talk about his grandchildren. So, so then after I did that family tree, I had, uh, in the first interview, and I explained the estate plan in reverse. And this is what a lot of you folks are missing this. You're not, you're not doing that. And I wouldn't have asked you to do it if it didn't work. Explain the estate plan in reverse. And it takes, that takes your client into a little deeper dive. You, you're taking them, you're taking them with you. Come on down. We're going to go down in here. I'm going to take you and I'm going to, I'm going to escort you and you're going to be safe. And, and you explain an estate plan in reverse. This takes a deeper dive into the decision process and invites the prospect to participate. And, and you know, when, when I get my prospect to start participating in the conversation, that's a micro commitment, folks. They're moving forward and, and they're moving forward because they want to, even though I've got them on the table in a coma and maybe going to die, they're participating. Now, these are a lot of words right here, but let's look at them. Your prospect, my prospect yesterday was now engaged in participating and will willingly give you information about their real estate holdings. That's a micro commitment. It's a micro commitment that ensures successful entry into page two of the confidential. And, and, and you have that page one. Remember now, I'm leading to the very concept that's going to make me the most money and help them the most as soon as possible. So I got to get to page two of the confidential and I got to take the client with me. They, they got to come with me. And I do that by them telling me about their family, about who they want to make those decisions and about the real estate holdings that they have. And that, that gives us say, well, now we got to go on to something else. Uh, so, 
So when you turn the page, it automatically leads to a discussion about long-term care. And it's a real lighthearted conversation. It's not an in-depth uh, discussion of long-term care products. It's not a, a, a push to make a sale right there. If you do that, you're out of your mind. You're throwing money away because you turn into a product salesman instead of a process leader. And once, once I've talked about the family and talked about them, what happens when they get sick and when they're at their weakest, who they'd want to uh, have represent them and, and talk about some of their biggest possessions, like the real estate. And then we go into the long-term care real quick. Hey, tell me about your long-term care plans. I, it doesn't matter what the answer is. I have triggered the thought process to get that man and his wife or that couple or that individual to think about the fact that the day is coming when their health could fail. That's all I want. So, therefore, if you plant the seeds of the need to discuss retirement or income security, uh, if you're dealing with younger prospects, there you're going to be talking about term insurance and disability instead of uh, uh, permanent life insurance and and uh, uh, income planning, but but it's okay to talk about either one. But you just want to go lightly with the long-term care. Do not get in the weeds of product discussion or product offerings. If you do, you lose control. And I'll tell you one thing I don't ever do in a sales presentation. I don't ever lose control. And if I have to, I refer them back to the agenda. And I have the agenda in front of them. So the true purpose the true purpose of the long-term care discussion is to open the door to human frailties and possible future outcomes that can be properly funded. I don't say that to them, do I? I just, hey, tell me about your long-term care plans. Then I shut up. And then I say, hey, we'll get back to that later. Because I know that once they've told me about their plans, I've already set the hook I've already set the, the stage. I've already set the process and the roadmap for the coming discussion. So remember the target. Remember, the goal in bringing up the long-term care is not a pivot to a long-term care presentation. You, do not, you don't want to do that because you don't know what their health status is yet. I could tell by looking out in that car and watching that lady walk from the, her car to the office that there was a health status problem. Didn't bring it up. I just watched. But, but, but you know, you got to be aware that if you're doing this presentation right, you're still creating awareness of the overall picture. You want mom and dad on the same wavelength. We got to talk about the kids. Got to talk about it being in the hospital, been talking about the real estate, been talking a little bit about their long-term care. And I've got the awareness there that all these things are starting to form. Don't blow it by converting to a product salesperson. Just stay on target. So, so if you if you look at your confidential, the very next topic is the income analysis. And this is the part I love because I'm going to make, I'm going to take two people who are unaware in just about two or three minutes and I'm going to convert them to aware at the same time so that they can look at each other and they can acknowledge the facts. And I want to make sure that my prospect, remember, I didn't say suspect, I said prospect. I want to make the prospect aware of income streams tied to assets and income streams not, look, I capitalized those three letters, not tied to assets. Because it's the income not tied to assets that makes this presentation so powerful and drives the message home so quick to a point where, where Mr. and Mrs. Whoever are willing to discuss solving the problem that they have just become aware of.
not being clear and simple on this, excuse me, is the topic of, of self-sabotage. And, and I'll be honest with you, some of my licensees get out there and self-sabotage themselves. <clears throat> If you're not clear on it, if you're not simple on it, <clears throat> it's an error on your part. Excuse me, I have to get a drink of water. <clears throat> and I like to sit at my desk and I like to watch the client's response because it tells me so much. It's like looking at a pot of water and trying to decide if it's boiling. If you do this right and you see the communication going on between mom and dad across your table, across your desk, they are about to leave the awareness stage and enter the need to find solutions because it's pretty serious. But they're not there yet. That's like a big old bass swimming around a hook. Getting ready to to grab it, but hadn't grabbed it yet. So if you yank that hook out of the water too long, it's gonna scare the fish away. And this is where you have to say, you know, now that we know that you've got income that's not tied to assets, and that income will come to you for the rest of your life. You've got to give them the definition of an income gap for retirees and potential retirees. You, it's, now, it's now time to insert the math problem that they need to solve because, you know, this whole universe is broken down into arithmetic. Everything. So, you know, if we can discover the gross monthly income of each spouse, that is not tied to assets. But they know it. If they tell you they don't know it, they know it. If you ask them what their social security is going to be or what their social security is, they'll know it. Most of them will give you the net, not the gross. That's okay. If you can discover the gross monthly income of each spouse that is not tied to assets, I wish I'd capitalized that not. I, I, my spell check didn't know to do that. This includes social security and any pensions. Add it up and compare it to the projected monthly expenses. And the best way to, the simple way to do that is, hey, are you pulling money out of your savings account every month to pay your bills? Or are you, are you just taking your income, Social Security and pensions, and are you okay? They'll, they'll know the answer to that. You don't have to have a, a, a scientific calculation. It's just a simple question. Have you got any money left over at the end of the month or you happen to pull out your money out of your savings? It's a very simple question. So, so there's a gap if there are more expenses than income. And there are five possible solutions. The other day I told you three and I thought about this more and I said, wait a minute, there's more than that. So let's talk about them. One, they can, they can cut expenses. It's hard to do right now with inflation going crazy. Two, they can draw from available assets. Three, they can get a job. Four, they can rely on family and friends. Five, they can go on public assistance. There's, there's no other options. And most of it, and if you're talking to people that are going to be relying on family and friends and relying on public assistance, I need to get you out of that uh, pond because the fish aren't right. They're too small and they're not edible. You need to get into a spot where, where their, three, their three best choices are get a job, draw from available assets, or cut expenses. So, so see that, that triangle right there? That's supposed to be a mountain with two cliffs on the side of it, but, but I did a little bit better in the next frame. But do not go into product solutions at this time. These, again, you're making a mistake. You want to discuss products in the second interview, not the first. So you want to move on to the definition of cliffs. We've already defined the, the gap. 
but we also had to define the cliff. And if you try to turn that into a product sale, it's self-sabotage. So if you're following the agenda, the prospect is ready to receive this concept and to share the experience with the spouse. You know, we may have a small gap, but sometime in the future, we're going to have a cliff. And you know what? It's a conversation they want to have with each other and didn't know how to set the stage for it. And here I've been teaching you for the last 20 minutes on how to set that stage. And they are not even aware that you're setting that stage. But as soon as you said it, they are so glad you did that they're willing to go even deeper into the conversation if you're good. If you're not, get good. So, so there's two types of cliffs. One is the changes in income not tied to assets at the first death. And most of you already know that the lowest Social Security is going to disappear within 30 days. And some people have pensions that they split with their wife and the pension's not going to change. But some people got divorced and then retired and took 100% of their pension and then, and then, uh, when they die, their wife loses that pension and the wife doesn't even know it until it doesn't show up in the bank anymore. So, so there's changes in income not tied to assets at the first death, and then there's changes in expenses at the changes in health of one or both spouses. Those are two entirely different cliffs. I'm not, you know, so, so, you know, the topic of this, uh, webinar today is is how to deal with gaps and cliffs. And the very first thing you have to do is you have to be able to define them in a way that the people you're talking to can absorb it and understand it and want to know if there's a way to avoid the calamity that might be ahead. So now now these people you're talking to, now they're aware that gaps and cliffs exist. They weren't aware when you were drawing their family tree. They weren't even aware when they agreed to make an appointment with you. But you're good. And your heart's right. And you know where they need to go to examine the possible solutions that you're going to offer. You have to get their heads in the game. And you better be good at it. And it's easy to be good at it if you follow the script and the agenda. So now that they're aware of the gaps and the cliffs, now's the time you'll mention that gaps and cliffs can be funded with sure things and maybes. Boy, that's that's pretty accurate, isn't it? I didn't say that that can be funded with an index annuity contract with a, a well-being rider attached to it. I said it can be funded with sure things and maybes because they understand a gap. They understand a cliff. They understand a sure thing and they understand a maybe. No need to get into products. And if you do a little bit of self-sabotage, why are you doing that? I hope, I hope I don't catch you doing it. I'm going to look at you and go, why'd you do that? You, you knew better than that. No need to blow the sale by becoming a product salesperson at that time. Keep control. You got to take them a little deeper. You got to, you still, you're not there yet. You got to pull them in just a little bit more. And they want you to. They do want you to. So, so why would I pivot at that time? When I'm talking about gaps and cliffs and sure things, that may, maybe why would I pivot over to health questions? Because it's the right thing to do. It's the best thing to do. It's a smart thing to get to do. And it's, it helps your prospects make decisions. So, so I'm still on page two in the confidential folks. And if you've made your prospect aware of the need for long-term term, term 
care planning and the need to plan for income. You've done that on page two. So, see, so, you know, you got to remember the goal. You, you want to pros you want your prospect to go from awareness of the issues to seeking solutions. Remember, when they got there 30 minutes ago, they were unaware. And because you're a skillful uh, pre presenter and, and you've done your homework and your heart's in the right place, you have converted them from unaware to aware. And then after you make them aware, you bring them to the point where they start thinking, well, how do we solve this? Because it's it, it's something that, that now they realize they need to solve it. Because either their income that's not tied to assets is not enough to pay the bills, or they're afraid that they might run out of money. It's going to be one of those. We talked about that last week. So, so this is a power phrase. And if I, if, if you all could ever uh, put, <laughs> put something in your pocket, excuse me, pocket that's valuable. It's the, the, the right application at the right time of the right power phrases that I give you in the sales presentation. If you are a firm believer that your current health status is a primary factor in your investment decisions, that's why you ask the, the prospect to agree. And here's what I do. I go, hey, Ed, I'm a firm believer that your current health situation is a primary factor in your investment decisions. Would you agree? Now, when I say that, you got to remember, we just talked about the long-term care. We just talked about the income. And we left those conversations because I'm not finished with them yet. I'm going to take them into the world where they want to be and didn't realize it. Because now mom and dad get an opportunity to look each other in the face. And when they answer those questions, I'm going to know which one's closer to the cliff. And to be honest with you, I'm going to tell them. Because when that lady got out of her car yesterday and walked down the sidewalk and into the door and into the office, barely gasping, you know, just, just exhausted. And I sat her down. And I already knew from the, the first interview, because this was the second interview, I already knew that he had long-term care and she didn't because she got declined. And I looked at her and, I, and she said, I wish I could have had some of that. And I said, what if I told you you could have uh, the equivalent to that, probably at a, at a lesser cost than what your husband's paying? And you won't, I won't even ask you any medical questions. She looked at me and she said, can you do that? I said, I think so. And the reason I thought so is because I already knew how much money they had. And I knew that they, they brought me their reports in and their, their uh, fidelity accounts, their, their stock accounts, but uh, uh, they had bond funds and stock funds for $230,000 that were going down in value every month. And he looked at that and he said, I didn't know that. And he had a money market account with a quarter million dollars in it, earning 4% taxable every year. And he had $42,000 in another account. And then he had some an IRA that had about 35,000 in it. But that didn't matter. What mattered was, oh, I misspelled agree. Look there. That old spell checker. Uh, I want this prospect to agree that their current health situation should be a primary factor in their investments. That's a micro commitment. As soon as they say yes, they've already uh, agreed that they're happy with their family and their decisions in their estate plan. They've already agreed that the real estate needs to be in the trust. They've already agreed that they need to plan for long-term care. They already understand now that they have, they have income not tied to assets and income tied to assets. And that's either funded with sure things and maybes. And then they get hit with this health issue. Huh. 
huh, what's this say? It says, when and if you find health issues, you have the opportunity and the obligation to bring the issue to the table. You do. You have the obligation because, because mom and dad, one of them wants you to bring the topic up. One of them needs you to bring the topic up. And you know, it's usually the healthiest one because they're the one that's at the greatest risk if they don't properly fund the one closer to the cliff. Does that make sense? I hope so, because it works, and it's right. And they'll thank you for helping them have a conversation they didn't know how to have with each other. So, so, uh, that's why I might look at when I go, "Hey, Mister Miss or Mister Mrs. Prospect, with either one, your health issues. Your health, and this is what I said to the lady yesterday. Your health issues tell me you're a little closer to the cliff than your spouse. Would you agree?" And they both said yes at the same time. I haven't asked them for any money yet. Now. I'm just taking you through page two, and I've shown you that if you want to be an expert in gaps and cliffs, you squeeze it in in the middle of the page two. You explain what a gap and a cliff is. You leave them with the fact that it's either funded with a sure thing and a maybe, and you walk away because you got to let it seep and you got to let it simmer. And you're going to let it seep and simmer like a good cook by talking about their health issues and moving into page three. And it's on the agenda. So remember, when you go into page three, all you need is the ballpark estimates at this time. That's all you need. And you're seeking to identify movable maybes over to sure things. That's the way I look at it. Of course, I'm not allowed to teach anything but sixth grade. So I had to keep things pretty simple. I'm looking for assets that are movable. That will help them solve their problem that they have just become aware of. And they've understand how now how serious it is that they need to take care of it. And that maybe their current situation is not properly funded. That's where I want to leave them. So when I'm walking through their assets, I'll talk about how a CD can be a maybe. So if people think, see, see, these are sure things. Well, they're not. A CD's not a sure thing because if you get a 3% or a 4% CD and inflation rate goes up to 7% real quick, you've just lost money. It's not a sure thing. A money market's not a sure thing. The interest rates can go down. Money markets aren't insure, insured like a bank CD. IRAs are not always sure things. 401ks are usually not sure things. They're usually maybes. In my in, in my closing interview yesterday, when I was trying, I knew that that I knew how much they were going to give me, and I knew uh, that the only thing that they had to agree was was at their age. I looked at them and I said, "Okay, you know, you're seventy five years old." Why is your money at risk? What good does that serve? What happens if your market goes down in value at the same time your health goes down in value? Well, you start running out of money quick, don't you? And they looked at each other, and I saw them look at each other. And I knew one of them was going to make a decision. I knew who it was going to be. It was the healthy man who loved his wife. And the decision he made was, honey, if you want this, we'll get it. And I said, well, let's compare it to your options. And I showed him a MAGA at 6% guaranteed. And I showed him their stocks. And I, I pulled up the history on my computer of the stocks that they had and showed how they were gradually going down in value. And I said, did you know that? And and he said, no. I said, well, who, who's your advisor? And he said, I don't have one. I just have my money there because I saw their ad. 
And you know what I said to him? I said, hmm. And then his wife spoke up and she said, if he can do this for us, it, I want it. And he looked at me and he said, which one of these would you pick? And I said, it depends. If you want the guaranteed interest rate, that's not a sure thing. And, you know, ma'am, your health's not very good. And I can give you a sure thing, guaranteed income growth that doubles if you have to go into assisted living. And if you die at home, we'll give up all the money back to your husband. She said, that's what I want. So I just want to ask you a question. Do you see how easy that is? To be sincere and to care and to have the ability to lead people from being unaware to ready to seek a solution and ready to implement in 30 minutes. And it's not because I'm really good at it. Well, I'm saying it is partly because I'm really good at it, but but at the same time, I didn't get good at it by not doing it. And I didn't get good at it after my fifth or sixth time. I got really good at, at it after my 15th or 20th time. And now where I do it maybe uh, 50 or 60 times a year, I can do it blindfolded. You can too. So so let, I just want to review what what we've learned and what has surfaced from this interview. You know, because it's not what you know in products. And if you think that's what it is, you're just going to sit there. You're not going to grow very fast and you're going to become a product salesman and you're going to get a lot of no's. But anyway, you understand, this is what I did. When I look at, at this chart right here, this is what I did with that family. And it took me two interviews. In three weeks. That's okay. I understood their family dynamics. I helped them understand it. And when I talked to them, they were talking about their family dynamics and the way that I presented it to them. The, I, the client has already told me who they would want to make their decisions. They've already, uh, I know that they have real estate and these folks have got some acreage up in uh, upper East Tennessee. And they already told me that he had a long-term care policy and I didn't know what it was until he told me yesterday and it turned out to be a money garden. I looked at him and I said, money guard's a great product. And I said, what's it cost you? He said, $570 a month. And then I, I looked at him and I said, are you the same guy that complained about getting your wife long-term care coverage on a well-being rider that's going to cost about $2,500 a year? And he got real quiet and I said, I looked at him and I said, that's okay. You just didn't know. Your broker just took the easy route. He insured you and left your wife out in the cold because it was easy. And see how I started firing the broker? That broker's out of here. He gets to keep the money market right now. But anyway, uh, I have an understanding of my prospects' long-term care plans. And I'm, I, I had already introduced the gaps and cliffs to them. And I brought up the topic of health status. And I understand the ballpark status of their finances. And look at number eight. And da, 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 da. I've earned the right to close on the estate plan and to set the stage for the back end sale because I have entered each and every room in their lives and their economic lives that they have worried about and needed somebody to talk to about and gotten micro commitments in each one of those areas. They can't say no to each other now. All they want to do is say yes to each other. So, so, you know, Mr. Miss Prospect, after reviewing your current plans, don't you think having the proper paperwork is a good idea? Would you agree that that's the first step? They've already, everything I've asked them to, that they, uh, to get them to agree to, they said yes. Why would they not say yes to that? They will. 
if they say yes, ask for the credit card and go, go to your website and, or use the paper forms. But now after getting that done, it's time to go to set the stage for the back end sale. And the back end sale is going to be closing the gaps, closing the cliffs by converting maybes to sure things. That's pretty complicated, isn't it? That means you need to know all about products. You don't need to know about products. All you need to do is say, do you want to close that gap? Do you want to fix that uh, cliff? And do you want it to be a sure thing or a maybe? They'll go, we want to close all of them. We want it to be a sure thing. Bam, you're done. They don't even care what company you pick. They don't care what product you pick. They don't care how it works. They trust you. They love you. They they know that you're sincere. You, they know that you've led them through the, the process. Time for a handshake. That's it. You know, so many, uh, and we'll, we'll come to questions here. I mean, I know lots of you are asking questions, but, but, uh, I earned the right to ask him for a quarter of a million dollars yesterday. And he agreed. So, so some of this you've seen for, for, for just general information set to stage, the front end sale is what I call, we talked about it last week, a unique mechanism. I just demonstrated for you one of the most unique mechanisms in the financial services industry. The ability to take an unaware couple and turn them into people seeking solutions and asking you what they need to do. I don't have competition. Once I get once I get the client to that level, I don't have competition unless it's a son-in-law. A, a, a tool few understand is a gateway to long-term financial services relationships. Uh, a movie that should never change, no matter how many times you watch it. And what is it I keep saying over and over and over and over to you guys and girls? Do the same approach and the same go-to first interview every time, and it will lead you in so many different directions and get and introduce you to so many product sales and you won't be competing with other product salesmen. They won't be able to compete with you because you are so unique. You are so unique. So, so here's the premise. Uh, the marketing goal is to use the front end sale to lead to the funding process and it's unlimited possibilities that can be organized in a step-by-step -step procedure. That's pretty cool, isn't it? Very cool, I think, because, because it's it's simple to understand and it changes the lives of the people you're talking to. So, so Family Tree uh, Asset Positioning works because of the following reasons. It helps you to be a better advisor if you understand the family dynamics. It gives you the opportunity to discuss the current state plan of your prospect. It gives you the opportunity to gather needed data. It allows you to make the proper diagnosis and allows you the opportunity to offer the best prescription. I want to say follow the Yellow Break Road, but I've, you've heard me say that too many times. So, so it, because you've talked about gaps and cliffs, and health status at the same time, you will have discovered and or created a lifelong project desired by all people who love their families and have a legacy to protect. Well, that's a pretty cool spot to be in. I call it the sweet spot. And, and it's either by confirming the best solution is already in force, ha ha, probably not, or by making the prospect aware of the things they had yet to consider. And, and even if they had the perfect plan five years ago, remember, they've had relationship changes and asset changes and health changes. So so when we look at the the skill that I'm, I, I, I really want to show you and teach you and get you to practice and to administer and implement 
The skill makes you the advisor unique in the financial services environment. You become distinctive. You will have accomplished the front end sale, either by getting someone out of the government plan called probate, break, creating a new estate plan, restating an existing plan, confirming the existing plan is appropriate, and now's the time to review proper funding of the estate. You know, any objection they give you should be a positive. Oh, I've already got an estate plan. Great, let's make sure it's properly funded. You know, even if they already have one, even if they already have a trust, that does not mean it's properly funded. You saw this key to the door last week. And I thought maybe I ought to say it again. This is the doorway to the first back end sale and all future sales to come. I, I told you I'd, um, about the 230 before lunch, but you know, yesterday for breakfast at the IHOP, getting the two plus two plus two plus two, which is the two, two pancakes and two pieces of bacon, and two scrambled eggs. My client gave me $52,000. It wasn't a front-end sale, and it was not a back-end sale. It was a future sale, one that I knew he was going to make next year, and the year rolled around, and he did it. Because he's done it every year. He gave me about $50,000. All I got to do is buy him breakfast at IHOP. He shows me his new truck he buys every year. When I get in and he haul about it and tell me how great it is. It's great. I'd love to have a new truck every year. No, it's sort of like mine. But so it's a doorway to the first back end sale and all future sales coming. But first, you have to make your client aware of what needs to be done. This gives you the opportunity to sell your prospect on you. You know, you, you folks that have got a whole bunch of stuff on your uh, 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 email and you're trying to sell on, on your email for the first thing. Get rid of it because people don't want to be sold as soon as they meet you. They want to be sold on you, not sold on the products you represent. Give them the time and use the proper presentation to let them be sold on you. Then they'll buy whatever you want, whatever you want to sell them. Of course, you just got to be ethical and good and smart. But anyway, during the 20th century, we had this so-called three-legged stool. Everybody uh, provided uh, as an underpinning for retirees. That is, cash flow could come from three sources, Social Security, pensions, and from former employers and personal savings. That's gone away in most cases, except government. However, employer pensions have become the exception rather than the rule. Pensions are still common for long-term government workers, but are relatively rare in the private sector. But the, those government employees are also the ones buying the bigger personal pensions to supplement what they have. So, so instead of pensions, private sector employers are uh, offer employees the opportunity to put wages into defined contribution plans, such as 401ks. I, I want to call them 401 maybes. And consumers have the choice of turning on a reliable income stream from a fixed income annuity for a period of time or for a lifetime to supplement other sources of income in retirement. And so I looked at Mr. and Mrs. Lunchtime yesterday and I said, you know what, we can set this up so that you can, uh, they told me they would like to have about a thousand dollars a month extra and, and that uh, they would afraid they would run out of money if they did that. And I said, no, it's going to cost you $230,000. And I said, then you're not spending it. You're just moving it across the street. And it, and if one of you dies, it doesn't change the income change the income a bit. And if one of you dies, if the other one wants the money, you can grab it. It's yours. And I looked at him and I said, it's an income stream that you can't outlive. Wouldn't it be good to know? And that, that $250,000 that you have in the money market right now at, at uh, Edward Jones, what they call him, Eddie on the corner, from Edward Jones, you don't have to spend it. You don't even have to draw from it. Unless you live too long and, and inflation gets to you. 
And then that generally equates to more spent time in retirement, pressure on retirement assets to last longer, even with Social Security and perhaps other sources of dependable cash. There still may be a gap between actual income and desired annual outflow. And if they've been retired 10 years, they might have started out with no gap and they might have grown into one. And they're worried about their money. Fixed income annuity can fill that gap, generating income that will last as long as the retiree does, as long as they might live. That's a pretty good thing to tell somebody. It's true. So I looked at my buddy yesterday at 1130, and I said, you know what? Uh, the way you've got your money right now, you may wake up tomorrow morning and your principal might lose 20%, 30%, and you might your health might go down at the same time, and you're going to drain that account. But in the, the account I'm telling you that you might want it has principal protection against possible market losses and has a sequence of returns risk occurs when financial markets drop early in retirement, when a retiree is tapping his or her investment portfolio. Fixed income annuities can give you lifelong protection as well as offsetting the potential expense of a need for long-term care. And then I looked over at his wife and I said, I said, that's what you want. That's what you need. And I looked at her husband. I said, you need that on her too. And he said, I do. So, you know, you've got a contract that you can give the incomes, both the same income for the rest of their lives. Just like a government pension. You know, so and a lot of this, I'm just showing it to you. I showed it to you last week. Fixed income annuity can offer continued contract ownership to the survivor and may provide tax deferral and market risk-free cash flow to an aging widow or widower in need of stable income. And in addition, fixed income annuities may have cost, just as the case with any financial product, such as an additional fee for an income rider. Again, a financial professional can help by determining the actual cost of buying a specific FIA to ensure that the product and associated cost meets the specific needs of the investor. What, what greater specific need for an investor is awareness of the gap? Awareness of the cliff, awareness of the maybe, and awareness of the sure thing. The numbers all fall in place. It's it's that concept. Gaps, cliffs, sure things, maybes. That's what ties it all together. So so here's what I'm saying to you. A lot of you want to pivot over to the life insurance sales too quick. The reason I want to need to go to the income analysis and why I designed the sales presentation that way, if running out of money is the biggest concern, why not address that issue first? Why take the risk of, of tying up a life insurance application over a couple months? Why not take care of the income, then do the life insurance? You might even do a fixed income and, uh, annuity contract that generates enough premium to buy the life insurance. So, so why not address this issue first? Why not keep the client interested in the process by discussing their biggest concerns? Why not develop the funds funding for gaps and cliffs with sure things and not maybes? Why, why not? Remember, you know, your original primary promise. And I've, I've, I've you know, y'all hear me harp about it. And I don't change it. I keep my primary promise the same. I'm the most boring salesperson in the world because my primary promise never changes. Because I think that my client or my suspect would benefit from a conversation about their current estate plan. And in most cases, they'll learn things that they were not aware of. And, it, you know, you can't prove me wrong on that. So, so and we've talked about the unique mechanisms, the Godiva delivery, the uh, it, to be efficient, you must set the stage for the next step. Since the biggest concern of the elderly is the fear of running out of money, why not set that stage? So, so what power phrase in the in the family tree asset positioning interview does that for you? Well, Mr. and Miss Oops, prospect, uh, 
I have some ideas for you. But I need to do a little research. I need to talk to some underwriters and run some numbers. But our conversation has led me to lots of thoughts where I can come in and help you all. So when you come in next week to get your estate notarized and witness, would you like to see your numbers? And I'm not going to say another word about sure things and babies until next week. So, so use the things you learned in, in this interview. If you just use them, you'll watch your income grow. You watch your prestige in the community grow. You watch, you watch your security grow and, and you won't be so stressed out. Use the gaps and cliffs you discovered to be your base premise of research. You know, because to be prepared is to be confident. I'm just as prepared with a blank confidential as anybody in the marketplace because I can whip it over, turn it upside down, draw the family tree. Use the confidential and adjust the, the agenda each time. The net front end sale value. To a licensee, it's about $1,000. We've talked about that. The net back-end sale usually nets between $5,000 and $20,000. The future sales are unlimited. And I don't, I don't care. You know, uh, that $52,000 went into a MAGA that I did at 8 o'clock yesterday morning. I probably made 2% on it. I made about $1,000. Breakfast cost me thirty. The $230,000 index annuity contract, probably close to... Fourteen or $15,000. If I wasn't such a workaholic, I'd have just come on home. Because that would have been plenty. So, so you know, remember this. Family tree asset positioning is a process that should last the entire life of the client. You'll, you'll get better each time you do one. And just why not start today? Find your 10 suspects. Turn them into seven prospects, have three front end sales and one back end sale, and you're making a quarter million dollars a year. And we've already talked about your commitment and, and starting where you are. You guys are out there listening. You know, I'll talk to you. I'll I, I, I tell you what I don't want to do. I just don't want to talk to people that haven't done their homework and don't attend classes and then call me up with an emergency and want to talk about things that they could have learned in their lessons. And, and the reason for that is that is because I left the house yesterday at 7 a.m. and I got home at 8.30 p.m. Trying to administer what I know and what I do. And I'm just going to be honest with you. I need good help. I need good people all over the United States that that will take our story and go out and present and convert unaware people into aware people who are seeking solutions in a way that they understand it and are willing to move their maybes into sure things. <clears throat> and again, we've, you know, I don't have to get into the mindset again. I, I, I sent you all that Tony Robbins uh, uh, exam that you ought to take. And if you haven't taken it, uh, spend it's 20 minutes and, and answer those questions and read what Tony Robbins has to say about you. You don't have to buy his products. You don't even have to acknowledge that he's going to, you can delete it after that, but take that test and see who you are. See if, and, and see if you're telling yourself the truth. Okay. Uh, if you're comfortable where you are, you're probably on a plateau income wise. You know, if, if you want off the plateau, there's two ways you can get there. One, you can jump, and fall down a cliff, or you can climb up a little higher. Or you can stay where you are. It's okay. I don't think anybody on this webinar today wants to stay where they are. So, so you know, if you want to uh, have a, a sales presentation that leads to long-term care, asset-based long-term care, income planning discussion, current health status consideration, liquidity reviews, annuity reviews, life insurance discussions, retirement conversations, IRA reviews, 401k options, and advocate discussions, then try the family tree asset position and go to first interview. Then apply your unique mechanisms. Remember what a unique mechanism is. It's something that makes you distinctive. There they are. And, you know, nobody's sending you a bill for any of those things. We're just teaching you what you need to know. 
If you use those unique mechanisms, align your client's choices with their most important goals and most deeply held values, help put your client's house in perfect order and allow them the tools to keep it that way, with the proper back-end funding creates a level of confidence that no matter what happens, their goals will be achieved. So, and I can see down here, there's lots of questions on the chat. Um, um, Y'all can turn your microphones back on if you know how. I don't know how to turn your microphones back on. But, you know, if you want to ask some questions, I, I we'll look at these chat questions. I'll try and answer them for you. But if there's more, um, uh, to be honest with you, I don't know how to get down to the chat. So, Jennifer or Lisa, if you're out there, can you all help me get down to those chat questions? Let's see. Um, anybody got any ideas how to do that? Why don't y'all just go ahead and ask me your questions? It, Anything that you want to know, I'll, if I know the answer, I'll tell you. So I want to sit here and be quiet for a few minutes. And if I'm quiet too long, I'm going to say bye. Any any questions? Okay, Randy, can you, do you know how to see your chat? Well, I've got that chat bar across the bottom down there, but on this second screen with the one I'm working on, I, I can't get down to it. Okay. You, you can actually end your PowerPoint and, Go to chat if you want to, or I can read them to you, whichever you'd like. Go ahead and read them to me. Let's read them. Let's, let's do them. Okay. <clears throat> so. Uh, James Cummings. When you ask, should we get the paperwork started? Do they realize that you're referring to complete all the estate planning documents? Of course they are. Yes. And, and okay. you know, why are they there? You know, when you look at them and say, um, hey, you know, you've done a pretty good job with your uh, uh, investments, your sure things and your maybes, but don't you think you need to have the right paperwork? And, and you know, they'll agree to that. And, and, and you've earned the right to say that's the $1,995, but it's a lifetime agreement for you to have your license and you don't have any more attorney fees when it comes to your estate plan. Now, it doesn't mean you don't have printing fees and replacement costs and stuff like that, but you don't have any more attorney fees. You pay the $29 and, and each year when they start billing it, and uh, we'll, we'll keep it on file. We'll keep it in the, uh, in the cloud for you. Mr. Cummins, I hope that answers your questions. Uh, send us in some more apps. You had a pretty good month the other day. All right. Next question. Got he has some more questions. Go ahead. Do you, do you normally use an FIA with an income rider that has an inflation benefit that can increase the future annual income payments? No, I only use it when it's needed. Okay. Do you like using an FIA with a first year bonus on the income rider? It depends on uh, whether you want to rely on the internal growth of the contract in a lot of cases the income bonus gets the income going quicker and and but it will slow down the internal growth of the annuity which is best let your client decide show them both show them show them uh, the income shield with a 10 percent bonus show them uh, uh an, an income product without a bonus you know <laughs> show them how the internal cash value will grow quicker without the bonus um uh, but at the same time if they're older you don't need the, the bonus on the cash value you need the bonus on the income and if they're older like 83 to 85 you want to go to emeritus because you get a 40 percent bonus on the income side and they don't have to wait a year they only have to wait 30 days so the answer is it depends on the client that don't get stuck on one product Look at the needs of the client. And if you don't know which is best, show them both and let them decide. It's okay. Next. All right. Can I uh, respond to that one as well? Of course. So when I send Mike Bemis, because um, I'm with Simplicity with you, when I send Mike Bemis the information that I'm looking for, um, and he runs it through, let's just say they need $3,000 a month income. The software is going to automatically sort through all of the bonuses, all the income riders, all of the all that kind of stuff. It's going to sort through, 
and we're going to find out which one is actually going to be best for their situation. We want income in the first year. It's going to give me this one. We want income in the 10th year. It's going to give me this one, right? So it, all of those situations are going to be, yes, it depends. And so that's why we need to know kind of what we're doing. Um, right. right. And, and Jen, that's why, it. here's what I say. Here's what I say about that. Uh, hey, you've done a good job with your assets. When you come back in next week, I need to do some research and I need to run some numbers. What I'm really saying is I'm going to call mine. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, uh, so James says, thank you. And then I, well, I had a couple of questions myself. Um, I, I was wondering after, after all of that, so you did a good job explaining, um, could we do you and I a very short role play and you just tell me what you say for income gaps and income cliffs? Could you just tell me just that part of it for to end yeah. today's presentation? Yeah. yeah. And I'm going to do it with my eyes shut because that's the only way I can look at the confidential right now. Okay. It's, all right. <laughs> okay. All right. So um, go ahead. Are you going to ask me questions? You just want me to do the spiel. No, do you, well, I just, you could just, do that for us. That would be great. Okay. That's what we're, we're going to do. So I'm just, so I'm just your client and you get okay. to this part. You just get to this part of the presentation income okay. gaps right okay right. And start, just start from there okay i'm going to say uh jen uh, i just wanted to know what your long-term care plans were but right now I, I want us to pivot over to to your income a little bit uh can you tell me a little bit about do you have social security now no okay uh, are you planning to retire soon um probably around age 65 isn't that when everyone does no, most people, some people retire sooner, some people retire later. Uh, so in your situation, uh, if you couldn't work, do you have a way to replace your income? Um, not right now. Okay. All right. Uh, and the only way that you could replace that income would be a disability policy, wouldn't it? Right. I, I want you to do it as if I was, you know, within five years of retirement. Okay. All right. Um, Jen, do you have any retirement plans? Um, no, I mean, I guess my 401k, right? Isn't that what that's yeah, for? Yeah, yeah, it, that's what it's for. Uh, do you have any idea what you think your income would be by uh, five years from now from your 401k? Um, I don't know, maybe 5000 a month. Okay, all right. And, and that's that's what I call income tied to assets. But you're going to have another source of income when you retire, aren't you? It's going to be called Social Security, right? Right, hopefully. Okay. So so most people, when they do their retirement plans, they want to retire. They, they want to base their income on, on what's guaranteed, what's a sure thing. And that's going to be, it's going to be your Social Security income. Do you have a pension besides your 401k? I do. Okay. And tell me about that a little bit. Uh, I get almost $1,000 a month from the military. Okay. All right. So you'll have your social security and you'll have your thousand dollars a month in the military and the military is never going to take that back. Are they? No, but you can't cash it in for cash. Can you? No. Nope. So it's actually an income that's not tied to an asset, right? Okay. Okay. And, and your social security, you can't cash it in. It's, it's an income that's not tied to an asset. Right. So, so have, have you got a ballpark projection of what you think your social security is going to be? I bet you know. Uh, about 1500. Okay. All right. So, so we've got these two sources of income coming in that are not tied to assets. It's fifteen hundred dollars and a thousand dollars. That's about twenty five hundred dollars a month. About how much money do you need to live on each month, Jen? Ten thousand. Okay. So you have a gap there. If you have uh, uh, fifteen hundred and thousand, twenty five hundred, you've got a gap of seventy five hundred dollars a, a month, don't you? I I guess so. I hadn't thought about okay. that. Yeah, but a gap is, but the definition of a gap is, is your income that's not tied to assets compared to your monthly expenses. So we've got about $7,500 a month uh, that, that uh, we need to find out. Do you think we have enough assets to cover that? Okay. So, so your, your choice is going to be to continue working or to pull from your savings or to cut your expenses. It's going to be hard to go from 10,000 down to 2,500, isn't it? Yeah. So, so um, 
do you think you have enough? Would you like to know what the number is that you would have to have to generate $7,500 a month? Sure. Okay. So we can do that. Uh, but what we, you know, but right now that's a pretty big gap. Now, what is it? Um, how's your health for a minute? I'm good. Okay. All right. So, so we know that we've got this gap of $7,500 and, and, and you're single. So we really don't have to worry about the cliff about when a spouse gets sick, but what would, on that $10,000, if you got sick and had to go into assisted living, could you rearrange your budget on that same $10,000 and go into assisted living? Yeah, because I mean, if I did, wasn't paying for the house things, I'd be paying for assisted living, right? So you let all those things go and then just pay for your assisted living if you had the consistent income. Right. Okay. So so uh, if you had to go into assisted living, you'd be approaching a cliff, wouldn't you? What's a cliff? A cliff is when, when you have a change in health that uh, raises your expenses at a time when you can't really raise your income. Okay. So right. I'd have to pay more money for the assisted living. Right, first. right, right. So, so let me, you know, and then I, and I'm going to stop right there. And I would say, I need to ask you some health questions. I'm a firm believer that your current health situation is primary factor in your uh, investment decisions. Would you agree? Yeah, sure. Okay. So, so I, I need to move on for a minute. Uh, so, but, but do you understand the difference between a gap and a cliff? Uh, I think so. Okay. The gap is, is in your monthly expenses when you're healthy. The difference is your, your income that's not tied to assets compared to your expenses. And if your expenses are higher than that, that's your gap. But your cliff is when your health goes bad because you don't have to worry about when you die uh, because you're single uh, right now. The, the, uh, you have to worry about it if you get sick and your expenses go up. So that's the cliff. And and what I'm about to do is we're going to go over to page three on the confidential, and I'm going to find out uh, how you're funded for that. And we're gonna we're gonna find out how many of your investments are sure things and how many are maybe. So that be okay. Okay. So then I'm going to go in and I'm going to ask you about your banking account. I'll be asking you about your money market. I'll be asking you about any annuities that you own, about your current life insurance, about your IRA and your 401k. All right. So, so, uh, and, and I'm not going to try to close you now. So I'm going to look at you and say, Jen, now that we've got this information, I can see here, I'm going to just make up a number and see here, you've got a, about a million dollars in assets. Um, I'm, I do know that there are products out there that would guarantee your income uh, growth at about 6%, which would be about on a million dollars. If you wanted to, we could get you about $60,000 a year, which is about $5,000 a month. Uh, and we would add that to the, um, your social security and your pension. And that still wouldn't be quite to 10,000, but if you could find a place like Tennessee where you could live in uh, assisted living for $7,500, you'd be okay. Wouldn't you? But, <laughs> but, uh, uh, you've done a good job with your assets. I've got some ideas for you. I need to do some research. I need to run some numbers because I think we can solve this problem. But I owe it to you to spend the time to do the research and run the numbers. Can we talk about that next week when you come back in to pick up your trust? Sure. Now, I skipped the closing on the trust there, but I was trying to show you how to cover the gaps and cliffs. So did that help anybody? Yes. That, was, that was very, very helpful. You did it with my eyes closed. <laughs> well, I would hope so. <laughs> <laughs> so I do have one other question, and I realize that that uh, that part of the answer to this will be like a whole nother thing. But I do want to know, um, we don't do this gaps and cliffs with younger people, do they? Do we? Is it? Well, like, yeah, yeah, you still have. Above, or, well, you, you can do it with sure. younger people. You can do it with younger people. And Steve, we're going to get to your question here in a minute. I'm sorry. But yes, you can do it with, with people because their gaps and cliffs are are uh, mostly in loss of a job, uh, which which means that they, you know, they better have a savings account or the loss of their health where they can't work their job, which is a is a type of cliff. Right. So those are and, cliffs. And, and then, and then, if one of them dies and they have children, they they all of a sudden they have an income not tied to assets called Social Security for the children. 
And that's about, I'm going to guess and say it's close to $900 a month right now. So, so if you passed away and, and if we plan, if we wanted to plan for income for your children, we would have to look at the income that they would have not tied to assets, which is $900. Uh, uh, I don't know what you spend on your children right now, but we, uh, uh, if we're going to take care of our children, that's all they're going to have unless you have some money in a trust or, or some life insurance. Or if you don't die and just get sick, a good disability policy. So when you're talking to younger people, you're talking about different products. And that's okay. You know, um, I'm a firm believer that that uh, any, any young person you see that they've got any life insurance, just tell them to add a zero to it. <laughs> you know, now, okay, you know, so... So cliffs are still going to be the same. You're just going to talk about different uh, scenarios. But for gaps, um, like I, I, I talked to this couple in their 20s this week, and I just skipped the retirement thing because it was like, you know, that's not going to be appropriate. But if I want to position it for an IUL sale for somebody to save money for retirement, right? If I want to okay. position it, right? Have you thought about, I know that's not your target market, but a lot of us already have clients that are in that age range. Have you right. thought about, so between 20 and 50, as what I would say, age okay. 20 to 20, 50, and I want to position it for an IUL sale. Okay. Have you thought about, instead of that retirement gap, right, we're not going to have that conversation. It's just not, you know, not something that anybody's going to think about at that age. Have you thought about anything that you would do to kind of replace just that little bit of it? I had thought about that. Uh, and the reason I haven't done it is because I'm so busy where I am. And, okay, and, so and I don't, I don't work. I know that I, I don't work with, with, uh, I don't mean this wrong, but millennials, the, uh, but, but because, uh, I'm so busy trying to take care of the market niche that I have built. Right. I, I think that there's room. Uh, to use this for the younger people. And and if I was going to talk to younger people, I would do it and, and, and pivot to what I talked to you about the term insurance and the, and the social security for the children, things like that. And the reason I would do this, because I want to get to their parents and I want to talk to their parents about, uh, I think that they might benefit from a conversation with me about their current state plan, just like their children did. So, you know, uh, you won't make as much money dealing with the younger people unless you're selling huge life insurance policies. Um, okay, so here's my here's my thinking on this, Randy. First of all, some of us are coming in with a book of business that has a lot yes. of young clients, right? They're Absolutely. they're uh, they're mostly married. They have kids at home, and they've got a house. They need an estate plan. All right, I'm going to go in. I'm going to. They're already in my book of business. I'm going to talk to them now. Okay. Once once I do whatever I can do to help them, I've also got now their parents on both yes. sides. Their brothers. Absolutely on both sides yeah. and anybody else, you know, the people at work and there, can you help my cousin and all those kind of people? So I'm, you know, it's a great referral system. So, uh, and even when I'm talking to people who are doing retirement planning with me, which is a lot of it, um, still I'm, I'm asking them, what about your kids? They've got kids at home. You've got, you know, grandkids, young grandkids at home. What happens if one of them dies? What happens to their kids, right? Who's going to take, uh -huh. or both of them die? Who's got, they're in a car accident. Who's going to take care of their kids? I'm talking to e them about every single person in their family. And so I'm getting as many referrals as I can. It doesn't matter to me what the age is. Okay. And I understand that. Uh, everybody's got, you remember, uh, I've talked to you, most of you, you've seen them on the uh, screens. You have to start where you are. Okay. Um, I started where I, I was, uh, Stephen Holmes and I started in the revocable life business uh, a dozen years ago uh, or more, uh, but I also was in the veteran market helping uh, World War II veterans because I'm a history nut. And I've always just been at home in the older market. So, so when I designed this sales presentation, I designed it for the older market. It can be, it can be modified down to the younger market with just a few tweaks and in, in, in the confidential page too. Uh, and, and I've been very honest with you all. I probably haven't done it cause I don't know how to cut that square out and put that information in there for younger people. We probably just need to do a, a page two for people under age uh, 50 and maybe just, uh, have two, two confidential page twos. And I, I could work on that. Uh, my problem I, is I'm not, I'm not looking for new work projects. <laughs> I stay so busy. 
Uh, well, I can, but I'm, I'm, I'm open. open to, Randy. Yeah, I'm, op I'm open to looking at it. Yeah. Yeah, I, I can work on that too. I just think um, I can, yeah, I think just the gaps in the cliffs would really be the only thing that we would need to, to tweak. Everything else is going to stay the same. Okay. All right. Um, can we, Steve's had his hand up for a long time. Can we let Steve ask a question here? Yep, I'm done. Thank you. Okay. Steve, what's, what, what you got? Um, actually, yeah, that was, uh, my, uh, um, my mistake, my notepad oh. on the keyboard. <laughs> uh, you already know it all. I know. Okay. Well, anybody else out there got a question? I I do. do you have a number for Mike Beamer? Bemis? Uh I I would best way to do is not to call him, to email him. Okay. Uh, uh Cynthia, just send me an email and I will introduce sure. you to Mike Bemis. Okay. Okay. Thank uh, you. But but he, he likes an email first and then he likes to schedule uh an appointment on his calendar, just like I do, because a lot of times you sure. all say I can't reach you. It's because I'm talking to people that schedule appointments. Okay. All right, so let's let's get you an appointment with Mike. I think it's a good okay. idea. Okay, I need to get an, another appointment with you as well. Okay, uh, uh, I've got a little bit of time Friday morning. Okay, great. Right. Okay, what else out there? Uh, Randy, somebody asked a question, uh, and maybe you answered this already, and I just missed it. Uh, about how do you modify this if you're 65 and you're really going more after AUM? I'm sorry, say that again. I missed that, I missed that last part. If they're 65 and what? Series 65. No, series 65. no if you're oh. series 65 and you're going after AUM more than you're going after annuity sales. Well, you know, um, that's okay when you when your folks are in the accumulation stage of life. And financially, there's three stages, accumulation, preservation, and distribution. If you're going after accumulation, you have to be series 65. You can talk to them about accumulation, but you also have to understand that those are maybes. When, when, uh, and if they're, if they're a whole lot younger, uh, we need to tweak the presentation a little bit. Okay. You know, now, Randy, I, uh, I am, I'm going after retirees and pre-retirees, you know, okay. uh, All right. you know, 55 to 70, usually that's my target. Uh, I do work with younger people sometimes, but, I'm asking about the target okay. if, okay. if we need to right. modify the presentation for those okay. people if no, they're you, trying you, to do AUM. You, or... you do not need to modify the presentation. Here's what you do. You go in and you take care of their sure things first and not put all their other maybes that they want to risk in their AUM. I talk to people with 2 or $3 million all the time. And they go ahead and they take care of their income and, and they take what money they don't want to lose. And then I just say, well, leave the rest of it uh, with your broker or give it to me. I don't like to, you know, I, I'm serious 65. I just don't like to chase the AUM because um, I can't be behind my desk to service it. You know, but if, if you like the AUM, just remember uh, uh, AUM is best when it doesn't have to be pulled when the market goes down and your health fails. So if you take care of those things with the index annuity contracts and the uh, 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 the income analysis, then look at them and say, you know, you can put the rest of it in your AUM. You don't have to worry about whether it goes up or down anymore because all your all your uh, concerns are are taken care of in the sure things. And and you can write a lot of AUM that way, but you can also write a lot of big annuity fixed index annuity contracts and and a lot of life insurance. Does that answer your question? Randy, the question in the chat was a little bit different, though. It was. Um... I'll go ahead and ask it. Hi, my name is Javier. I was the, uh, hey, Javier. How you doing, sir? Good, good. Thank you, sir. Yeah, so I'm, I'm a Series 65 um, agent, and um, I have written a lot of index annuities in the past. Um, life insurance and whatnot. I just, um, you know, with the, with this license, I've had it for a couple of years. I just don't feel that I can lead with those type of products, especially with the big comp that is, uh, you know, generated because of of, of these products, um, and it creates a conflict of interest when I'm pitching these products. My RIA, my uh, the firm that I'm with, does not 
will not uh, adjust or modify the ADV, the uh, company brochure to to allow for conflicts of interest. So that's where I'm at, right? Where I'm like, okay, okay. well. All right, yeah. all right, Javier, let me just throw a statement at you. Sure. Okay. Uh, uh, if, you, uh, if you follow uh, that, uh, okay, if you follow that process, and, and what happens if you don't talk to your clients about the things that we're talking about? Are, can they not hold you responsible if, if you had the opportunity to talk to them about their income, about uh, their yeah. retirement? Yeah. Uh, yeah. You know, yeah. and, 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 you know, all I'm it's saying all there I'm is, but I'm getting a bad echo. Nobody's to commute themselves. Okay. Um, you know, you know, I'll be honest with you, the, the, the brokerage houses uh, are wrong. If they are telling you not to talk to those people about their estate plans and not to guarantee their income, now you can, you know, uh, the, the, a lot of them will say, well, guarantee it with the bond. Well, the bond's not a, a, a sure thing. So, so, you know, I, I'm saying that there's, there's room for both. And if you're talking to people about assets under management without talking to them about uh, their uh, secure income and their retirement, and their long-term care, uh, you're making a, a a mistake, and and it's okay if 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 you're growing and everything. But all I can say to you is, what happens if you don't talk to them about it? And I'll be honest with you, what if, what if you run into somebody like me, and you get a letter saying that we're moving five hundred thousand dollars over into a fixed index annuity? Uh, if you attack me on commissions, I'd tear you apart. Because I'd look at you and say, you, they don't pay those commissions. The insurance company pays me those commissions. And and it's true. And I'll look at them and I go, if they don't have that income, if they get sick and don't have the long-term care income or the income that they need, uh, or if they lose that money in the market, are you going to give it back to them? And the answer is no, you're not. So I mean, I, what I would say to you is, is uh, don't let, yourself get brainwashed as you get older you're going to find that your clients start leaning toward preservation and distribution and not accumulation and yeah, and I, right now right now you're young and 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 uh, you know there's a lot of money out there under assets under management and i understand that uh and and that's a process that that evolution or or as people grow older that process won't hold up unless they're all multimillionaires. Okay. Uh, the people that want the income security and things Hello. like that are not multimillionaires. Hey, Steve, Ryan. Yeah. I had uh, texted you before your, are you done with your webinar? Uh, just about done. Oh, okay. How much longer? Probably 10 minutes or so. David, okay. you need to talk you about want to do this after yeah. that? Yeah. Okay. Um, I'll call you right back. Thanks. Okay. Thanks. Okay. All right. Uh, okay, but but Javi, I uh, I don't know if that answers your question or not. Uh, yes. But it, it, if I were you, I would be on the lookout for people like me uh, uh, because my job would be to convince the client that their needs were not taken care of and to show them mathematically uh, how that that if they got sick at the same time their investments went down, would they have enough money? And and uh, uh, yeah. I would just encourage you to to be aware of that situation. And when you see that, uh, use the presentation, help them set up their estate plan. Uh, and I'll be honest with you. Uh, I read a report and I, I posted it the other day. Uh, RIAs all over this country are adding estate planning to their product and service portfolios. Now, uh, series, some Series 65 are not RIAs, they're IARs. Right. Okay. And that means that the broker has dominance over them. Right. I'm an RIA because I can't stand that. <laughs> you know, I've, yeah. uh, sometimes I, I feel like I'm out of here all, all by myself, but, but uh, I, I know that, that what's appropriate changes because people have relationship changes and asset changes and health changes. And, and I am a firm believer that their current health status is a primary factor in their investment decisions. If they don't, you know, if they don't understand that the money that they have at risk could go away at the same time their health fails. Right. So, so um, uh, there's a presentation that if you want to look, I think you probably ought to watch it. It's called fire the broker. And, okay. and uh, you probably, you probably Holly, I'll send you a copy of it. Just, just so you can see what's yeah. going yeah. on. We need people like you in the investment world 
to cross over and say, I'm, I'm going to talk to my clients about their estate plan. We need people like you to come in and say, you know, uh, to all your clients, I think you would benefit from a conversation with me about your estate plan. If you don't have that conversation, uh, uh, people are going to start using it against you, uh, uh, especially especially people that are in the same market as you. Yeah, yeah, I, 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 yeah I, I agree. And uh, I think boils down to finding a different RIA that's a little bit more flexible because, yeah, my my guy's pretty uh, set in his old ways and and just manage money, you know, no, yeah. no for annuities. Uh, right, no and I understand that. Yeah. And I understand that. It's just, it, it, there's just a whole other ocean on the other side of the world that says you can do both. And you can do both because you had the estate plan conversation, not because you didn't tell them something because you're somebody above you told you not to talk about it. And does that make sense? I mean, and that's what they're actually doing. They're telling you okay. not to talk to them about something that they're going to talk to somebody else about if you don't. Sure. Yeah. Okay. All right. Okay. I hope that answers. You. Come join us. I want you in there. I've seen your name all over the place on my on my spreadsheets. Join <laughs> us. Uh, uh, don't get yourself in trouble, but but uh, I think your income go up. And and if they've convinced you that that because of the higher commissions uh, is the reason not to do it, uh, uh, I'll be honest with you, Javier, you're a little bit brainwashed there. Don't believe that. The uh, yeah, sometimes I feel I shot myself in the foot with this license. I'm like, oh my goodness, I used to write a lot of uh, no, no you don't shot yourself. Uh, uh, you've you've you just because you're here today, you've opened the door to to uh, so many more possibilities that would, can increase your AUM, not decrease it, and it'll make you more distinctive than the other brokers because you'll be talking about their estate plans. Okay, all right. So we got some more. Uh, Javi, I hope that answered your question. It does. Thank you, sir. Okay. Any other questions? I think there's six or seven more questions out there. Silent questions. Randy, uh, Jim, go ahead. Randy, I just want to ask you again. I just want to make sure are you gonna you gonna be down my way here. Uh, was you planning on coming this way? Uh, yeah, probably next week. I, I I've got you know I've got to coordinate those appointments all at one time because i can't dive, dive down there three times to do one each day i gotta do them on one day and and i'm just being honest with those people if they want to see me they're gonna have to see me in my schedule so i'll have to get back with you on the date all right thank you sir i just want to make yes, sure yeah, right. and i do want you to go because i want you to watch what i do yeah. uh, and that's the reason why i'm asking <laughs> okay all right Thanks. how about jake jake you got a question jake Wait. uh yes Randy, where are you going to be Nashville. Oh, okay. Sort of. Um, Mr. Jake, how about you? You're, you had a question. We've been so busy. Uh, you're new to us. I'd love to answer your question if you have one. Hope you haven't gone shy on me there. <laughs> how about how about anybody else? Uh, I'm going to go have... Uh, meet a client at 5 p.m. who's who's uh, probably going to do a future sale. Uh, she's one of my drawings that I sent you in the uh, uh, those uh, family tree drawings that I sent you. Um, her her uh, grandfather died and left her some money and and then her mother died and left her some money. OK, so, Jake, I'm going to read your question here. What do you do with people when they are committed to working for the rest of their lives because they love their work? I've got a couple and he's in his early eighties and not retired. <laughs> That's like me, doesn't it? <laughs> well, some people don't know whether they're working or playing. And, and, you know, some people are who they are because of what they do. And, and sometimes to, to think about giving that up, that doesn't mean that they're not going to have a pending cliff. And 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 uh, you still need to talk to them about it. They don't probably don't have a gap. Maybe it's the fear of a gap that re is the reason they they want to keep working. But they're going to have that cliff, and whenever that cliff occurs, you want to be sure that you've helped that person handle that cliff. And it could be the cliff might be the death of a spouse, or it might be the loss of his health that increases his expenses without his ability to increase his income. So, so it's okay if they want to keep working. It doesn't stop you from having a state uh, 
conversation with them, and it doesn't stop you from talking about their gaps and their cliffs and their sure things and their maybes. Doesn't matter how old they are. I like the 80 to 85 year old person uh, because they know that at any moment their health can drop them in their tracks. <laughs> and that's what the Emeritus contract's all about. That's why it's so good. Mike Beavis will teach you about it. I'll talk to you about it if you want to. Uh, I've, I've sold three or four of them in the past couple of months to people in their 80s. They like it. Any other questions? All right. Uh, what are we going to talk about next week? Okay, so so uh, you can send me some suggestions. Uh, I'm, I've only got two more classes that I'm going to do the rest of the year. I'm going to shut down on, uh, uh, let's see, December for second, third, fourth, December 5th and December 12th. We're going to do classes, but I'm not going to do one on the 19th, and I'm not going to do one New Year's, uh, the week of New Year's. So we'll be shut down, but I will be open for questions and things. So uh, anything else? Folks, I've enjoyed talking to you. We went a little longer today, but but uh, uh, if you want to, you know, if you want to make a quarter million dollars a year, uh, sell three trusts, have, t have 10 suspects, make appointments with seven, sell three, and fund one each month. Okay. All right. Other than that, I'm going to head on out. Um, I hope you guys, uh, Jennifer, thanks for your help today. And uh, I'm available if you want to go to rentalbaxter.com. If you need the password, uh, it's uh, to get into FTAP training, go to FTAP. The password is FTAP, all capital letters, courses, uh, small letters, no space, FTAP courses. And that'll get you all these videos of the, uh, and one thing that, that makes me a little bit distinctive on the estate planning side is lots of companies will, will sell you the software, but there's nobody out there teaching you how to sell it. And, and pretty soon you're going to be distinctive enough to where you're going to be able to teach people how to sell it. Okay. So other than that, Thank you all for coming and, and uh, thank you for hanging around and, and uh, go benefit somebody with what you know. Take care. Bye.